My name is Technical Sergeant Chris Gallagher, and this is my story. In 2017, uh, I lost an airman to suicide. I still remember it like, like it just happened this last weekend. It was finally a night where me and my wife could actually sit down and, and watch, watch a movie um, and, and, and not have to you know, keep stopping and get the kids to bed and all that. As we were getting ready to watch the movie, my phone rang. It was my airman, uh, and he says, he says to me, he says, uh, hey, Sergeant Gallagher, do you have anything going on? Uh, and I told him, no, you know, it's, you know, it's after 11, me and my wife are watching a movie, ain't got nothing going on, what do you need? Uh, and he told me, he's like, hey, great, he says, because if, if, I, if I hear a door close, uh, if I hear a car start, um, I will hang up the phone, put the phone in my pocket, and I will not pick back up. So I stood up, was talking to him, said, hey, what, you know, what's going on? What can I do to help? Uh, and he says, uh, I just wanted to let you know that I'm not gonna be in to work on Monday. So I was like, okay. Uh, and at this point, you know, I, I'm standing up, I'm pacing, pacing the room. Uh, my wife is looking at me like, what's going on? Uh, and I said, okay, you're not gonna be to work on Monday, what's, what, what, what's going on? Uh, and that's when he told me, he said, I'm out here on the Government Hill Bridge and, um, and I'm gonna jump. At that time, I, I turned white as a ghost and at that point my wife knew by the looks of me something wasn't right. And so I go into training mode, um, get, get them talking, get some information, try and uh, you know, help help them the best I can. Uh, so as I'm talking to them, I'm asking them, hey, have you, you know, talk, talked with your family, what's going on? Uh, and every time I would try and take control of the conversation, uh, he, would, he would stop me. He would uh, say things like, I don't want to talk about that, or um, let's talk about something else. Um, and he would kind of keep me on a on a timeline, he's like, hey, I, you got two minutes, um, what, what do you have? Um, so at that point in time, I'm just thinking, keep, keep him on the phone, keep him on the phone. Meanwhile, my wife is in the other room. Uh, she's dialing the, the Anchorage uh, Police Department um, and they're asking questions. She's writing down on a notepad questions uh, and I'm answering those questions, trying to, you know, Keep the convert, try and keep him calm, uh, and not alert him that we're sending anything out. This goes on for for about you know seven seven eight minutes, um, and as I'm sitting there talking with him, he, he tells me, hey, you know, there's there's a car coming. Uh, you have until this car passes to to let me know whatever you need. Um, so as I'm talking to him, my wife comes out of the kitchen. Uh, and she, as she's telling me, hey, um, the police are on the scene, as she's telling me to hang up um, is when he told me, hey, um, I got to go. Uh, and he proceeded to jump. I heard everything uh, through the phone. Um, I, heard, I can still hear the wind um, blowing across the phone to the thud. Uh, when it when uh, it hit the ground and the phone went went dead. Shortly after that, I called the first sergeant, uh, reported reported that to the first sergeant, um, and as the the shock and everything is going on, what I just heard, what what just happened, I, I broke down. About thirty five to forty five minutes after I had talked uh, with the first sergeant. OSI was at my door, probably about 20 minutes after that. Um, there's a knock on the door um, and the phone's ringing with uh, the chaplain corps uh, and uh, the task, for task force True North. As the week went on, I had this internal um, pressure that I was putting on myself. I, needed to, I felt like I needed to be strong for my family. Um, and for my wife, I needed to be strong for my section to try and help us pull this through. 
um, and it affected my work. I had some, a little bit of anxiety uh, when phones rang. I was nervous when the phones would ring um, and, and my productivity um, started going down. Um, and that was when uh, the chaplain came by and he's like, hey, we need to talk. And one of the big things that both the chaplain and the task force, task force True North um, said to me was, you know, we're here for you. And anytime you need, you can call day or night, wh whenever. Um, so as I kind of did some self-reflecting on, on everything that's going on and going through all the, all the steps of, of losing an airman, all the grieving and everything going through that, um, I, stopped, I took them up on their word. And um, to, to sit down and talk with them, it started out just that, that 30, 40 minute conversation um, taking that pressure that I put on myself and even the pressure I didn't even know I was putting on myself and just talking about that and putting it on their shoulders um, start for that 20, 30 minutes was such a relief that time where I'm sitting there and I'm talking to them uh, and just let all that, all that emotion, all that pain, all that hurt, all the, the thoughts of uh, shoulda, coulda, wouldas, and just regurgitate that out onto uh, them just relieved so much pressure off of me, and I felt so much better after talking with them. And over time, that relief lasted longer and longer and longer. The more I talk about it, the more relief uh, I, I get, get from that. My message, I guess, is to... Um, to those of you who have issues and, and things that you're fighting, you're, you're not alone. And talk, um, talk to a supervisor, talk to a wingman, talk to a best friend, um, uh, talk. Um, the issues that the, the airmen had, I'll, I'll never know the true, true reason why, uh, what happened happened, but uh, I do know um, whatever issue it was, um, we can't work work through it if you know you're not you're not here. If you're questioning whether or not you need to go ask or or seek help, that's already the answer to your question. Whatever issue you're going through, you don't have to be alone. You're, you're not alone. You don't have to face it alone. Um, and there's so many people out here um, that, that, want, that want to help. Um, for, for me, the task force, True North, um, if, if it wasn't for that program, um, I, I, don't, I don't know how well um, both myself and, and my wife would have been able to get, get through this. I'd much rather sit and listen to the struggles um, and, and things that you're going through than to listen to wind in the phone. And, and I guarantee you, every supervisor, every friend out there feels the same way. Um, we, we'd rather talk with you um, and, and work through the situation than to listen to wind in the phone.